Hello again, friends. I'm glad you could join me. So last week we left off with the Renaissance. And I was planning to move on into Baroque, but then I realized that I had left out the Protestant Reformation. Not only is the Reformation important in church history and world history, but also music history. So let's talk a little bit about the Reformation. Usually we start the Reformation talk with John Wycliffe. Wycliffe was an English priest, scholar, theologian. He taught at Oxford University. And his idea was revolutionary that the church did not control grace. He believed and insisted that grace was given to anyone who asked for it. And he based this on scripture. John Huss uh, is a good next stop. Um, Huss was a Czech priest, and he believed that the common folk should be able to understand scripture. So he, like Wycliffe, translated the scripture into the common language, the Czech language. Huss was eventually burned at the stake. Uh, early 1400s, 1413, um, for heresy against the church, for translating um, the, the Bible, the scripture, into the common language. Enter Martin Luther. Martin Luther was a German scholar, theologian, priest, monk, uh, many things. Uh, he lived in Wittenberg, and he is famous for nailing the 94 Theses onto the church in Wittenberg igniting the Protestant Reformation. Well, you remember from last week, eventually Luther was excommunicated in 1521 from the Catholic Church, which meant he could no longer go to Mass. It also meant he was not up for salvation. He could no longer receive salvation. He couldn't go to the church, therefore he could not be absolved of his sins. Ergo, salvation and grace was not his. He wrote that, much like Wycliffe, grace is not a commodity of the church. So he's excommunicated. Well, what did he do? We think of starting a church. Well, he didn't start the Reformation. That started and it progressed over time. What he did was he started writing and he started talking to other people. He started writing texts and um, what we now know as hymn texts. But what he wrote them as was doctrine based on the scripture. He would write poetic texts. And then others, along with himself, would set those to folk tunes to common tunes that the people already knew, or sometimes they would write the tunes. This is the origin of what we know as chorales, the German chorales. The chorales were tunes that these texts fit. It was not a hymn as we know a hymn. It was only the melody. This we call in music the cantus firmus the firm song, the strong song. Along these lines, the congregation was allowed to sing these texts. Thus, we had hymn books for the first time. Now remember, most people couldn't read. So when we say hymn books, one of the reasons that they used folk songs was the same reason that when we had the Star Spangled Banner, they picked a drinking song that everyone already knew. You didn't have to teach them the music. So Luther took these texts from the Bible in order to teach theology, and he set them to common tunes. His first hymn book came out in 1524 and contained, I believe, eight hymns. So not really a book, much more like a pamphlet. And remember, there weren't widespread printing companies. So a lot of this was written down by hand. 
which is another reason why you simply have the text and a melody. He wound up making three of these hymn books in 1524, and the last of the three we, as the church, call the Wittenberg Hymnal, which is the first example of a hymn book. So from these hymn books, we have a practice. The congregation can sing the tune. That's what the congregation does. The organist can improvise around this tune. This is really when organs became popular in churches. It gave you the opportunity to embellish your hymns. So the hymn that I just played was a setting that Bach wrote of what we know as A Mighty Fortress is Our God. But remember, the parts that I am playing are not the parts that people were singing. That was simply the parts that the organist would play. From those parts, we start developing style. We start developing counterpoint. Counter being against, and we have a melody. So anything that works against that melody in rhythm, in, in movement, we call counterpoint. This is what led to Baroque music. So next time we will pick up with Baroque music.